Well, uh, I thank the society for uh, the opportunity to be with you and uh, discuss about this topic that uh, is very neglected from uh, the Cardiac Surgical Society just because uh, we keep on stitching and uh, forget that the means to produce better results is perfusion and physiology, of course. And uh, more than a decade now that uh, I've dedicated my research to uh, perfusion, I found out that uh, uh, I made more friends from the cardiac anesthetist societies and uh, perfusion societies rather than cardiac societies for the, the simple reason that uh, we believe that uh, uh, maximizing our technical skills, we uh, have the maximum benefit from our uh, case. But uh, to be honest, what you would see is not uh, uh, th uh, this concept. So uh, this was the device that has been demonstrated is the Gibbon uh, 2 uh, IBM device that was prevailed from uh, mid-50s. And uh, this is uh, the device that is contemporary, well, the type of device that we use. As you see, it, uh, it made 50 years to have something that is very similar. Of course, there are lots of advancements in these uh, uh, pumps here, but uh, more or less it's the same. So I resemble it with uh, uh, the evolution of, of uh, telecommunication, and this is the old uh, telephone, and this is the mobile, and it made roughly uh, half the cycle for uh, uh, having this mobile. But again, uh, it made uh, less than 10 years to go from this mobile cell phone to, to uh, uh, this, uh, this phone. That is not just a, a phone. It's, it's more than a computer than a phone. So uh, more, uh, all of them are mobile phones, but uh, this technology is much different. And I resemble it with uh, this system, the minimal invasive extracorporeal system, which made 10 years to be uh, from uh, this conventional CPB to, to that uh, simple system, but it's completely different uh, for, to the philosophy. Uh, for uh, having the base, why we need to do all this, uh, you all already know that uh, uh, the uh, adverse events from the carbopalmar bypass uh, is still with us. Even though we have all these advancements, we still have some uh, deleterious effects to uh, and organs, and uh, uh, the clinical outcome uh, sometimes is not as good as we would like. OPCAP uh, became uh, uh, very popular a couple of decades ago just because we wanted to uh, overcome all these uh, uh, adverse events. But to be honest, what we found out throughout the years is uh, the um, uh, maximum benefit you get from the uh, off-pump use is that uh, you uh, reduce the series and uh, nothing else. And uh, we all know that Ruby study was a landmark study to uh, temper the use of uh, uh, OPCAP internationally. And now we have uh, one figure or one digit uh, figures uh, uh, worldwide. So uh, with this background, uh, it seemed that there was a space initially uh, some 10 years ago, 15 years ago, uh, for the minimal invasive extracorporeal circulation. And those were the early days. And everything started from this uh, system, which is a, literally an ECLS system, an ECMO system uh, mounted with a cardioplegia uh, uh, set there. So it was uh, very clear that uh, uh, the difference between these two uh, these two designs is that uh, there is an absent venous reservoir uh, into uh, the mini system, and uh, that creates uh, a, a closed system which has no blood air interaction and all the effects from this. And as well, we do not have uh, shed blood coming from uh, the mediastinum to the system and creates what you've heard uh, earlier on. For all this, the Minimum Invasive Extracorporeal Technology International Society was founded. And as you see here nowadays, we do have more than 250 members. And it's a, a fledging society. However, as you see, it's a multidisciplinary society with all three disciplines, as well as uh, other scientists dealing with uh, the Minimum Invasive Extracorporeal Circulation and in, uh, in the industry is there. And uh, what's most important here is that with RED is the, uh, the UK uh, participants, the active members members of the society, which is, if you exclude Greece, which, is, which was the founding country, uh, it's the first uh, group of, uh, of country which uh, participates to this society, and this is good. So uh, 
to discuss about uh, what uh, Mark Bennett uh, previously told you is this paper that uh, summarizes all the definitions and potential benefits of uh, uh, the minimal invasive extracorporeal circulation that comes from 24 departments, as you see. And uh, uh, it's re really a landmark paper for our society because it uh, summarizes uh, uh, all uh, what someone, all the data that someone needs to know about this. So to overcome some criticism from the previous speaker, if uh, there is no definition, there is a definition, as you see here, uh, two years ago there was a, a chaos uh, regarding the, this te uh, terminology and uh, uh, what was a, a mini uh, circuit, uh, because most of these systems were custom made and uh, everyone thought that uh, if uh, he produces a closed uh, circuit or if he av avoids the uh, shed blood, then he produces a mini system, and this is wrong. So because of all these dispersed uh, terminology in the literature, the society uh, decided that uh, it should avoid any uh, commercial uh, uh, term or anything else rather than MIAC, which is the Minimal Invasive Extracorporeal Circulation System, and uh, also defined which are the components for the system to be characterized as a MIAC system. So not all of the mini systems that you are using are a MIAC system. And if you want to integrate all the advancements into one circuit, then you might uh, uh, fulfill these criteria uh, for the main components and for the additional components to be uh, a MIAC system. So uh, this was the early years. And the evolution now is that we already have in the literature four types of MIAC systems. And if you go from this simple ECLS system with the cardioplegia, as you will see, the modular systems are very advanced. And uh, go one by one. Uh, the type one uh, we've already discussed, it's a very simple closed system with the cardioplegia uh, line there. But uh, if we add a venous bubble trap here, so as we can uh, de-air uh, the system as, uh, as soon as there is any uh, air entrapment, for example, when we are open the heart for, for aortic valves, then we would need this uh, venous bubble trap, and then we have a type two system. And if we add uh, this soft bag, which is a soft cell reservoir, so we can uh, handle the volume of the patient and we can do more complex surgery like the, 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 the left heart, right, right heart of, the, uh, of cardiac surgery, then we would need this uh, system, which is the type three system. And to uh, go further, if we would like to start with a completely safe system which overcomes all the safety issues regarding uh, massive air entry or uh, massive blood coming from, from an accident uh, uh, tearing the aorta of the heart, then we would need a, a modular system with a hybrid system having it's a type 3 plus this uh, extra component which is a heart cell reservoir in parallel. And you can always convert to an open system as soon as you have uh, a disaster. And this is the system we are using in uh, my department uh, going from uh, the last decade from type 1 to type 4 now. And as you see here, there is a convention rate of 4% whenever we have a problem. But you can uh, uh, appreciate that the last five years I've operating on this device to 100% of my cases, redo aortic hearts, uh, uh, arrest, uh, uh, circulatory arrest, uh, and uh, all the right and left hearts and complex cases. And uh, this is completely safe without any problem. So what's the rationale behind all these uh, uh, MEX systems? It's that, uh, as you see here, in its flow, these, these lines are flow, in its flow uh, through, uh, during the, the pump, uh, the mean pressure is better preserved with uh, the minimal invasive extracorporeal circulation. And uh, red is the, oops, sorry. How I can go back? Let's all right, and uh, uh, with red is uh, the minimal invasive extracorporeal circulation. As you see, it's not that uh, the mean pressure is preserved better, but the norepinephrine use is less. So uh, this has uh, a, a, a result to microcirculation, and as you see here, uh, with red is the uh, the minimal invasive extracorporeal circulation. It reduces the hemodilution and the microcirculatory and hypoperfusion, and also, as you see here, has a beneficial recovery uh, benefit to microvascular organ perfusion. So it's evident from the literature that uh, uh, to uh, physiology level uh, it's a better uh, uh, device to use. But uh, as uh, uh, Alois Philip, who was one of the founders of this uh, technology, pointed out, uh, do we have the sufficient data when I ask him to uh, do the preface, the foreword to my book? And uh, this position paper summarized uh, 
uh, from our society, what are the benefits from the literature uh, exist? And as you see, class one level of evidence, a benefit is for uh, transfusion, uh, postoperative atrial fibrillation, renal function, and improved myocardial protection. So the data is there. But even if we go further for class 2A and level of evidence B, that is something that has to be clarified more. But uh, it, is, it is there. It's the uh, systemic inflammatory response, as you've already heard. It's uh, a neurocognitive function and end organ function regarding to lung, liver, intestine, and uh, to microvascular organ perfusion. So to see how this data come from, uh, it's from meta-analysis uh, mainly, which uh, exists uh, uh, comparing randomized control trial. And uh, I would uh, go quickly through these meta-analysis, the existing ones, to see that uh, the more patients that they recruit, the, uh, the, the more uh, uh, benefit they find towards uh, uh, MEAC system. So this was the first meta-analysis, 1,000 patients, they found out transfusion as uh, uh, the major component uh, uh, for, for the outcome. If we go to this meta-analysis, uh, 100 more patients uh, made a, a result to stroke, blood, uh, blood loss, and maybe started to be mortality. Uh, uh, a beneficial outcome. If we go to this one, which has 500 more patients, it's stroke transfusion, myocardial protection, and uh, if we go to this one, this, that, that has 2,300 uh, cases, blood transfusion, arrhythmias, and maybe stroke, and this is the biggest one, uh, that has uh, uh, 2,800 patients, and if you see here, mortality has become one of the major uh, uh, beneficial outcomes uh, that favoring uh, MEAC. And uh, this was uh, evident from uh, propensity score analysis, because if we do that, you see that in, uh, in big numbers, uh, 3,000 3, cases and more, mortality comes as a beneficial uh, effect of favoring uh, uh, the mini systems. And this is another uh, very recent meta-analysis. has lots of methodological problems, a uh, small one, 1,100. Th uh, 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 1,000 cases, but as you see, uh, they found out something. It's just for valves, ICU and hospital stay, which is very significant because I wrote a paper uh, some years ago that we said uh, the maximum benefit you get from this uh, 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 from using these uh, systems is that the clinical effect of the patient is evident to the cardiac surgical team in ICU. The patient comes warm, uh, neurologically in intact, uh, has a uh, uh, very limited uh, edema, uh, low lactate levels, and he's ready to be extubated in the next couple of hours. So that gives the opportunity to have very fast track surgery uh, uh, onwards. And uh, if, you, if I summarize all these uh, studies, as you see here, the more we go to the numbers, uh, the more uh, uh, beneficial outcome we find, and also mortality comes there. And uh, uh, if we go to see uh, the, uh, the raw data from uh, the randomized trials, as you see here, uh, the bulk uh, of the patients that there are, uh, the, m the more of the parameters that they found out that they're f uh, favoring uh, the MEAC system. So finalizing this uh, 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 report, let's say, uh, which are the requirements? Uh, I, I would say that it, it needs a decisive team, and this is really a multidisciplinary process. And uh, it, re it really necessitates a, a real teamwork, of course, a stepwise training and a strategy. And when I'm, uh, when I'm advocating uh, uh, training, uh, we have found out that 50 cases, cabbage cases, simple type 2 device or type 3 MEAC systems is enough for a, uh, a team to uh, become uh, uh, enough uh, expert to go further to do uh, aortic valves and then all Kaiser cardiac case mix. And of course we need a strategy uh, so as all the team will be involved because we advocate that uh, the circuit is the mini circuit that we've discussed, but the system is uh, the whole uh, the whole system with uh, all the peripherals, uh, uh, the, the, the advancements, and also uh, the cell saver. But the strategy is that makes the difference to obtain the maximum benefit uh, of, of these uh, uh, systems, and that's why uh, we have uh, uh, we are about to publish this paper with our strategy, uh, which is a multidisciplinary preoperative strategy uh, based on the minimal invasive extracorporeal circulation and to goal directed card surgery that uh, Professor Anucci will later on uh, uh, let you know. But as you see here, you need a, uh, a lot of uh, inline monitoring, so you have a real-time adjustment and uh, a teamwork. This is the anesthesiology surgery and the perfusionists who are really very close, uh, not just mentally, but uh, also in practice. Uh, 
So to finish with necessity, is it necessary uh, nowadays to have this uh, minimal invasive extracorporeal circulation? Well, regarding the off-pump, uh, as you will see here, uh, the meta-analysis uh, comparing uh, the OPCAP to MIEC uh, seems that they have uh, uh, very similar results. And uh, this is not only in, uh, in small meta-analysis, but uh, look here, a big network meta-analysis with 23,000 patients, and as you see, uh, MIEC is better to all these uh, hard endpoints, mortality, myocardial infarction, stroke, or AEF, and renal dysfunction. So it's much better to OPCAP, and uh, this comes from people who are uh, OPCAP users, and this uh, allies with our meta-analysis so that uh, th th there is a mortality benefit if you go to uh, a huge uh, amount of patients, more than 3,000 uh, 3, patients. And for this, uh, we've already uh, designed this trial, which is called COMICS trial, and uh, we will recruit 3,500 3, 3, patients. So as we prove uh, prospectively uh, all this data coming from meta-analysis, and uh, as you see here, uh, this uh, has a, a great uh, UK uh, in incentive uh, because uh, uh, Gianni Angelini, who is here, is the, uh, the chief investigator to our trial. And we have 45, 24 participating centers so far, and you are more than welcome to participate because we're still recruiting. We believe that we will be able to launch uh, uh, this trial in July 2017. And as you see here, it's a big trial with uh, three 1,500 cases randomized, and I think this is the biggest in, in cardiac surgery uh, the, the last years. Uh, and uh, the primary outcome will be a composite uh, postoperative outcome uh, regarding serious adverse uh, events. And the secondary are a lot of other uh, parameters that we were uh, about to, uh, to study. And, uh, oops. As you see here, these are the participating centers. I have uh, highlighted with, uh, with red uh, the four centers that uh, uh, have been so far uh, given interest and we are uh, uh, recruiting other centers. So to conclude my talk, uh, I think that uh, minimal invasive extracorporeal circulation is in associated with improved uh, uh, clinical sub uh, circulatory support and endocrine perfusion and that translates into improved outcome. <laughs> as uh, I have already so, uh, indicated, but uh, this is not just uh, 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 numbers, it's quality of life that we have proved it's better uh, when uh, you operate on a MEX system, and of course it's good for the healthcare system because the cost analysis, uh, at least these four countries, uh, saw that uh, there was a beneficial effect towards economics to uh, use of uh, MEEC. Uh, in cardiac surgery. So uh, the initial schedule I had that MIEC gapped uh, uh, something between uh, all, all the uh, period between a CP, conventional CPB and off-pump, it's not right. This is the evolution of uh, perfusion. So MIEC is the advanced uh, perfusion technique nowadays, and uh, it is the advanced because it's more physiologic perfusion and has to be integrated in the practice guidelines and become the standard practice. Uh, though we should appreciate that this is not a mini system. It's not a simplified system. It's a minimal invasive, uh, so it's more complex and demanding, yet more physiologic. And I will finish with this, answering this question that has been brought up in the literature. 15 years ago, from Jean-Paul Raymondi, one of the uh, people that tested this minimal uh, invasive extracorporeal circulation uh, early uh, last decade, uh, so he questioned, is it an evolution or a revolution? And 10 years after, we have uh, all the data to answer this question that uh, minimal invasive extracorporeal circulation is a revolutionary evolution in perfusion. I want to invite you all, as you've heard from Mark Bennett, to the third MIEC symposium that will be in uh, uh, Bern uh, next June. Uh, and uh, also to attend uh, this uh, live webinar from a panel of experts that will be in Thessaloniki this December. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor. I think in the interest of time, if it's all right, we carry on with the, uh, the next talk.